Hi and welcome back. This is another video on Waveform Multisampler. In this video, I want to cover the sound layer controls. If you watched the previous video, you saw an overview of how Multisampler is set up. Now I want to get into some of the details. When you first import a sound into Multisampler, what are the key fundamental controls you have to set up that sound to make it playable? That's what we're going to cover in this video. To get started, I've already loaded Multisampler. It's blank at this point. I'm going to load in my piano sample again to use as, as an example. This is a piano note set at the C3 on the keyboard. And the controls that I'm talking about, the sound layer controls, exist on this strip right below the waveform area covering this section right here between this piano icon and this name. Those are the controls we're gonna cover in this video. They're really simple to use. They work along with the handles and the waveform view to allow you to kind of process and set up each sample in the fundamental ways that you need to do. So to get started, I'm going to review the trimming tools. On the waveform itself, you can zoom in using the wheel on your mouse, or if you have a trackpad, you can also pan left and right on, on it and zoom in and out using whatever the, is the equivalent of a of a scroll wheel gesture. Now this is the trim handle so you can adjust the beginning part of the waveform that you want to use. I'll scroll out and then this allows you to adjust the end. So now when I play the note it will go between those two ranges. If I bring it way in then you get this effect. Stops a little bit too soon. So I'll just bring it out until I see that it decays naturally. Now, as I play notes, it will be mapped across the keyboard, meaning it will track the pitches of MIDI notes. So if I play a C on my keyboard and then go up to the next few notes, it will adjust the pitch of this sample to allow it to play musically. I can play an octave. That's a single piano sample. It actually sounds pretty nice. Now, if you don't want it to track pitches, then that's what this is for right here. If you turn that off, now any note that I play, I just get the original sample. For drums or things where you're triggering maybe a phrase, you might not want it to track the pitch across the MIDI notes. In that case, you would turn this off. Now, the next thing is the root note. If you want to adjust this so that the root note is playing back accurately, so when you play the note on the keyboard, you're getting the note that it's intended, then you can adjust this root note right here. It's set to C4 by default for any new sound layer. I brought in a C3 note, so if I want to correct that, I can just edit this, make that C3. Now, when I play my root note, so that allows you to adjust to match the original note. Now the next parameter is fine tuning. This allows you to adjust in cents. So you can go up and down by a number of cents. And that allows you to fine tune the pitch to get it tuned in just right. So if I play this and I adjust, you'll hear that the pitch will go up and down a little bit. Now if you really want to do pitch shifting, then you would use the actual sound shaping control here. So you could, if you want to actually go up or down an octave or modulate the pitch, then you'd use this control. And we'll get into that later. This is your normal sound shaping control, but the pitch up here is really a fine tuning for the pitch of the initial sample. Similarly, you can adjust the gain. If you want to add a little gain because the sample is a little bit weak, you can see if you if you add gain here, then the waveform actually grows. You can get a little stronger signal if you have a weak sample. You could do the opposite as well. You could take a little gain off if you really wanted to reduce the gain for some reason. This allows you to reverse the sample entirely. So if we click that, then the sample will be backwards. And that's useful for all kinds of special effects. And that's what that arrow is for. That's to reverse it. 
Now the next control is loop. If we turn on looping, we get an additional set of control handles. If I drag this, this sets the loop start. And then if I drag this in, that sets the loop in. So you'll see that after the initial attack, as long as you hold down the note, it will continue to loop between the start and end markers like that. So watch. Now that doesn't give you a very natural sound, but if you had say a string sample or something like that, where you want to create an initial attack and then be able to hold it out indefinitely, you can use this. You can also use it when you're triggering phrases. If you have maybe a fill at the beginning of a two bar drum loop, you can trigger it, it will play the fill, but then it will go into the main beat and just loop on that beat for as long as you hold it down. That's another use of this sort of looping. This type of looping is common on almost all sampler instruments that I've ever seen. And it's a really useful tool for sound design. You turn it on or off with this button right here. And then the next control is really the name. You can see the name of the sample or what we would call a sound layer in multi-sampler and you can edit it right here. So if you didn't want to call this piano C3 high and you just want to call it piano loud, you can just click on it, edit it right there, and you'll see that it edits it right here in the list as well. It's just a useful tool so you can kind of keep track of all of these different samples as you build them up. You can do the same thing with right clicking here. So you can right click in the sound layer list, click rename, and you have a rename dialog box that you can do right here. I'll put the C3 back in and you'll see that this name and this name are the same. As you shrink this down, you'll see that might disappear. If you have your window reduced in size, you may not see that name, but as you stretch it out, you will be able to see it. And those are really the fundamental sound layer controls in multi-sampler. Also very easy to use. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.